Welcome to Verbal Pick Video, where we give you a verbal image of life, and we are everyday people, and that's what we're dealing with, everyday people, everyday life, and everyday situations, right? Before we get started in this new 2017 era, I got to give a shout out to Brother Love Records, Brother Low Key, Gino, shout out to my boys. Them boys from the six, Hummer 2G, Jasmine Blue, Sister Angie, uh, Marcus Mum, Hummer 2G, Northside, Southside, East, West, H Towns, Cypress, Highway 6. I mean, it goes down and don't stop because wherever you at, you are everyday people. But I just wanted to discuss something with you all, something that I've seen, was something that I just witnessed, actually, i say less than 15 minutes ago. I mean, and, it, I'm, and I just had to do a take on this, right? Now, I won't tell you the location where we were at, and that's just to protect some of the people that, that was there, but I will say um, it was an experience. Uh, let me set the scene up for you all. We were all in a, let's say, uh, uh, a waiting area. We were all sitting down in a waiting area, waiting for someone to call our name up. Uh, you know, for the for the person that was next in line, and they showed Blindside, the Michael Orr uh, story, and Michael Orr played for the. Um, Baltimore Ravens, left tackle, I believe. And uh, now that was a scene. Now hold up, man, before that, before I get to the scene, before, before I get to the scene, within the the makeup of this audience, you had uh, elderly black, and I say elderly, I'm saying from around 58 to 63. Elderly whites in there around the same uh, age group. You had black males in there, I'd say from uh, 28 to let's say 48. Uh, black females, white females. You had white males, black males. White males in their uh, age group, I'd say, would be from 25 to let's say 40. No, 25 to 50. It was another uh, of that uh, that group that was in there. You had um, what they call Latinos, uh, Asians. I mean, it was just a, 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 a mixed, diverse group of people that were in the waiting room watching this uh, Michael Orr's film, uh, A Blind Side story about uh, Michael Orr. Now the funny part about it was, right, there was a scene to where the white lady who I guess was teaching him and uh, brought Michael Orr up under her roof, there was a scene where she took him back to his old neighborhood in the hood and the project, right? And so he's out of the car and a uh, young brother who was saying, yeah, I run these projects, whatever. And he was like, uh, basically hitting on the white female that she sat in the car. And he said, watch this, they like this, so you gotta give her that wink. He winked his eye at her, she looked all afraid. And I noticed, I'm laughing, it looks funny to me. But I look over at a white gentleman and he had to be around, let's say, 31, 30, 31. He turned red and he was mad. I mean, if, if he could have jumped through that TV and got a hold of that brother who winked his eye at that white lady, oh man, he would have choked him out. And I'm looking like, you know, I'm looking at the mindset. And in his mind, you know, how dare this black male in the projects wink his eye at this upscale white woman as if she was portrayed upscale within the movie. 
And I say, wow, man. I wonder if that's how some of these police officers who shoot down some of these brothers. I wonder if the narrative that they set in Hollywood that we, to them, we are the, their enemies. Or we have to be watched to blackmail. I wonder in their mindset, do they feel that they have to come and aid to protect a certain type of white woman? Because I noticed the ones who take on the hood culture, I guess you could say, you know, the hip hop culture, era, the white girls or whatever, they disregard them. But the ones who uh, they, they view as white that need protecting the upscale the you know the type and the the the, the bands and you know uh act and dress certain a certain type of way or aristocratic type of way do they feel obligated to come to her aid and there's nothing wrong with that because uh the army Elijah muhammad taught uh respect and protect the black women so I guess for them, it's respect that protect the white women. And that's fair because that's his women, we have ours. Now, the another scene where you had an elderly black woman that was in that waiting room, when, and on the movie, the, uh, the, the youngest boy told Michael Earl, or he had a because Michael Orr was wearing a a, uh, a rugby style shirt on and he said you need to change your clothes or take that shirt off you look like a bumblebee and she laughed like in a way of oh precious young white male God bless your sweet soul right and I, I'm looking at how different people reacted to just the scenes within the movie because when they were discussing oh, another point in the movie the lady sister asked her why she was taking in this black big black kid in the movie and she basically was like uh, in so many words she basically was like uh, is that is that white guilt what she was telling them. You bring you taking this black guy in due to white guilt. She actually had in the movie. I fell out laughing and everybody else was quiet. And I noticed though, well no, myself and one other brother, he kind of chuckled. But then I started noticing consciousness within that uh, that body of people. Now, it was only two of us that was conscious, and we took the stand of, of what is is what is. Truth is truth. Truth don't have no particular color. You, and I, you know, you can't relegate me to a certain feeling dealing with the truth. Now, but what was funny was, it seemed as though the black people in that body of group majority had a a response that society expected them to have dealing with certain uh, parts of racism in the movie. It's like when they belittled him had this big old boy up in elementary school talking about uh, how he couldn't read and He's Ferdinand the Bull, meaning he's acting out. Uh, uh, he's he's acting out. He doesn't have an identity, so he took on the identity of a character in the book, and the character's name was Ferdinand the Bull. And she now she's she's smart because it seemed as though that they were saying white women or white woman these black people, especially black male, is your illegitimate child. So you have to teach him, but you teach him in a way as if you, uh, 
domesticating an animal. Right? And so on parts where we should have been like, that's good. And you can't tell me that a young black male, his size, who they showed earlier dunking a basketball, doesn't have goals or desires to do something because you have to have goals and desire for him to handle that basketball the way he did and the way he uh, and the type of dunk that he did. He just didn't do a uh, he just didn't do a basic up under the gold dunk. He timed that he timed the dunk. But yet he's portrayed as he has no knowledge. Well, he's not knowledgeable to basic things in life. Asked, asked him, has his mother read, read to him? In his life, he was like, no. And then now check this out. I and mean, this our true story. Because that made me wonder too as well. But another thing that caught my attention. Now look. The room was packed. So an elderly white gentleman opened up an office. So a elderly white woman and her husband could come in and sit down. He told me he had a couch in that office. They can get comfortable back there. And the elderly white woman said to uh, another white couple who had a uh, infant, a child with, with them. And the child could have been no more than two years old. Now, mind you, there's the, 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 the white couple with the child that could have been no more than two years old. They were sitting... Uh, in the second row. Now there was a black couple with a child who uh, she wa wasn't of walking age yet. Around the same age, basically. And she asked, she passed by the black couple and asked the white couple, look, it's more privacy in this office and you can be with your family on this couch. We'll just trade and I'll come, you know, into the general populated waiting room and and you can take the uh and you can take the office. You all can take the office. And so they got up with their child and they went in the office. And I noticed the now the sister she she's looking back at the white lady. And the, si and the sister was like, you know, yeah, damn, they could have passed by right herself. But she looking back and she, I know she was like, man, you know, what about me and my child? I mean, matter of fact, the white lady didn't even, she was playing with and smiling with the family with the white child, but she didn't show the black couple with that, with their daughter no type of, I mean she didn't even really look at Pam no mind, Pam any attention and I was like well I thought about it because I, I was I was getting ready to say well what about this black couple but there were remind you there were other elderly black women that was in that body of people in the waiting room and they didn't play with the uh, that sister and her child and her hood. Now, mind you, a, a, a black male and a younger black male, he smiled at that uh, at the baby, you know, showing uh, you know that you know we here too. But my point I'm making is, I couldn't blame 
that elderly white woman for looking out for her people and her race. When you had black women her same age as the elderly white women, because you had elderly black women, that could have did the same thing as a free country. They could have showed love for recognizing their fellow uh, person that shares the same race as them or the same melanated uh, body as they have. They just ignored it, like the white women ignored it. You know? So, yeah, you can't. And I, you know, because it, it was a turning point for me in 2017. I'm understanding you can't blame white people for looking out for white people. And if they have time, yeah, they might throw black people a bone, but black people are secondary. White people are first and foremost in their eyesight. And so I'm getting it now. See, so you have brothers such as Brother Farrakhan who will point out or say you have to love yourself as a people and do for yourself. But then you have this old, unhidden, unseen slave mind narrative that's been passed for generations that's choking black people. See, the slave master, oh, oh let's, you know what? The slave master's ghost is still whooping black folk in 27. He not even here physically. Slave master done died and gone. Gone. But his ghost is hunting black people till this very day. His ghost, he don't have to kill us. His ghost killing us. His ghost would be like you saw in the cartoon where you had the angel on one side on one shoulder, you had the devil on the other shoulder. And the, 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 the angel is saying, uh, you know, I, uh, respect black people. And then you got the devil on the other shoulder saying, uh, he shorted you out of $20. Take that gun you got in your pocket and kill him. That's an example of the ghost, the slave ghost, the slave master's ghost. The slave master's ghost sitting back, put some guns in the black community, sit back and say, watch they kill each other. Watch they fight each other over my name's sake. He said, you see the names on these street signs? We named these street signs. This is my block. He'll kill like they did in the plantation. He'll kill that other black on another street because he disrespected my name because my name is above his head on the street corner that he stands on. He's going to protect my name and he'll kill any black that come around the corner and uh, and that doesn't belong over here. They do that in his name's sake. It's interesting. 461 years of oppression and the slave master's ghost is still effective in 2017. Now let's go back to the four in Chicago who abused that white 18 uh, year old teenager mentally who they said was mentally disturbed. But they got incidents of like in Dietrich High School in Idaho sexually assaulted a black male with disabilities with the coat hanger and avoided prison time, avoided jail time and the uh, the white football player who attended Dietrich High School who sexually abused and assaulted a black male with disabilities, mental disabilities, received no prison time. 
It was stories of people telling me, well, a white boy raped a two-year-old black girl and received no prison time. Because white people will never see other whites as terrorists. Because they're saying if I call him a terrorist, they're saying that's like calling themselves a terrorist. And they call you a terrorist because they don't see you as one of their own. And since obviously they're saying that since we don't value each other's lives, why should they value our life? They're saying you mean to tell me after 461 years white ancestors and the slave master goats continue to hunt black people with all of this technology all of this information all of these activists we had 2 million man marches that draw both over a million people And we're not spreading each one, teach one knowledge throughout. We still fighting over, we still fighting over material things that separate us. On this side of the town, we do it like this. And on that side of the town, you do it like that. And you come over here with that, I kill you. If I go over there with this, you'll kill me. But where you get the guns from, they even kill each other. We didn't leave slavery with a gun factory. How'd they wind up in black neighborhoods? Is it true that they would stall trains and on those train carts was boxes of guns? Just there. The folks stole the guns as though if they felt like they was getting over coming up and they, they pull up, load the trunk up, with a bunch of guns and drive off real fast like they get in the way but don't realize it was set up for you to take in the first place because they knew you take them guns and turn them on your own kind people on the same on the same people that live three two four five six seven doors down from you not only will you kill another black from another part of town but also you will kill uh, blacks on your same block Wherever you stay, it's not this. This not relegated to one city. Uh, this going on with blacks, with blacks actually on the planet. Because only thing Hollywood has to do is keep feeding the people the slave masters' ghost theology, and we'll continue to hate instead of love one another. I mean, they put, I mean, look, they put a system together. I mean, that's just factual. That's just what, we didn't put the system together. We didn't say, black people didn't say, hey, you know what? We're gonna manufacture some guns, give them to our own brothers and sisters, our own children, sit back, watch them kill each other for some laughs. We didn't say that. We didn't set that up. We didn't say, you know what? We're going to say that black is bad and white is good. Yeah, yeah, we're going to do that to ourselves. We didn't say that. We didn't say, you know what? We gonna judge between the light skinned black and the dark skinned black. Put them against each other. When in our actuality, I mean I done witnessed it my whole life. I mean I done seen white people, like the brother in East Houston, this San Jacinto on Market Street, biracial brother. And we know the one drop American rule where they torch his vehicle and rope 
get out, nigga, on this house. And but and then you want to front, come around in front. And the black community is though uh, light skin is saving you, or you getting some kind of privileges in society. Don't be fooled. And then dark skinned blacks want to say that I'm heavy melanated, so God chose me first. No, it's not true. A drop is a drop. Doesn't matter the shade. Because you get the same treatment, regardless. It's fact. You know, it's, it's just funny how all of this spun out of blind side. If you get a chance, go back and watch blind side. And then go back and watch blind side with different people. To where they can be where they can feel free to openly express themselves. And you will see the different the different takes man. The different the different the difference between how people respond and that lets you know where they're at through the response. If they're afraid to speak out, what's the problem? You have eyes, you see the injustice. You say you stand for truth or you say that you believe in the truth because you say that Jesus was the truth. How can Jesus be the truth? And you don't want to face the truth. And then say you following Jesus. It's impossible. Mean to tell and, and then you can't skirt around the truth. Meaning, meaning what I'm trying to say is your reaction to something can be a reaction that you feel that your former slave master want you to react that way. So you can keep peace with them. That's another narrative of turning the other cheek. That's another narrative of if you cold, give the slave master your, your coat. It doesn't work like that. That doesn't work. He he portrays a negative image, which you don't come out and say no. That's not how we live. Because what's happening is. You have others who think that, and then they say, well, it must be true because they didn't come out and say anything about what we did to them. Unless you wait on them to paint you in a bright light or paint you in a lustrous or paint you in a respect, respectable light to society. If you wait on them, if they got the paintbrush in their hand, and you want them to paint you a picture of you the way you see you, that's not gonna happen. They're gonna paint the picture the way they see you. And if you follow that image that they created, then you the fool, not them. That means you don't know yourself. That means that they created a puppet, a stick figure, and said, hey, this is how black folk walk and created it, and then you followed it, they like, damn, I just made it up. So yeah, 2017, it's a lot to discuss, you know? And then you gotta watch out, watch out, watch out. Watch out when something tragic is done or something tragic happens to a black person like the uh, Dylan Roof shooting at the AME church in uh, Carolina if you got a black person who lost the loved one or who 
is speaking on behalf of someone who died violently at the hands of racism. And their response is, we all have to get along in this society. And God, did, God or Jesus don't want us to be angry. You need to run them kind of by the church. Because that those are Trojan horses and their agenda is to keep you where you at and keep giving they tend to keep giving they percentage uptown and keep taking from you to live their lifestyle. You don't have to fall for that in 2017. You have to be able to recognize where you've been played at. And you got to recognize who's playing you. Because the masses is getting played. I mean, I mean getting played by old, by old, old trick. Old slave master trick. And it's still working in 2017. They create the narrative that black folk would not be successful without the aid of white people. And you got blacks who believe. See, if you believe it, you make it true. Because you start acting on it, or you start acting out on it, or you start, your actions will, will reveal that you believe what they said was true. You have a, uh, 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 you in a group, you have an opinion, you keep it to yourself because you're trying to mess up. Well, how would white folks feel if I said that? Slave. Uh, well, I don't know if I should do this or that because I might look strange in front of the eyes of white people. Slave. You're not worried about how you look in front of the eyes of black people. You're not worried about showing yourself with pride so it can spread pride through black people. You're not interested in picking yourself up and when you go out in public, you present a good personification of the black light for the whole world to see. Now you, you will come out and go to a public venue with high shoes and rollers in your hair. And then, when white folks give you a dirty look, you feel bad. And when a black person says something to you about it, you get to fight them. It's ludicrous, like Mike Tyson said. It's ludicrous. Don't make no sense. You know what I mean? But look, we gonna keep it rolling. Here on Verbal Pick Radio, H Town, South Park, Chris Monk, Casarina Pad, Mammoth and Tilly Lee, Bad Team, St. Low, Dippy, hey, it don't stop, Cold Black. Hey, um, again, Highway 6, some cycles, worldwide, Bird Peak Radio, we out.